Allah Rahman Rahim 5090 O level biology June 2014 the MCQ paper 1 2 and we're going to do the question 22 to 40. Question 22. Optician sometimes plays drops of a chemical in a patient's eye to keep the pupils wide open. Which muscles contract when this chemical is used? You see, you have to have remember is what are we looking at? We're looking at the iris. And the iris is made up of circular muscles and radial muscles. And inside here we have the pupil. Pupil is just a dark spot which you can see. It's actually a hole through which you can see the inside of the eye and because there's no light inside the eye, so you just see a dark spot. So here we also have the radial muscles. You see when the circular muscles contract, the pupil becomes constricts, the pupil becomes smaller. So but it says we need to keep the pupils wide open. So basically what is going to happen is these radial muscles which are going to contract so that is going to make the pupil dilate. The words we use constrict and dilate. So it will be radial iris muscles. Do not say ciliary muscles. Ciliary muscles would be the wrong. That controls the uh, shape of the lens. Then how does adrenaline affect glucose uptake by muscle cells and carbohydrate conversion by the liver cells? So adrenaline is going to increase the glucose uptake and it's going to convert the glycogen to glucose. So glucose uptake by the muscle cells because in case there's some sort of a you need to run or you need to you see a lion and you need to run well you need more energy to be released so more glucose to be respired so increased uptake of glucose will take place and more of the liver glycogen and will be converted to glucose. And then coming on to question number 24, the diagram shows parts of the forelimb, human forelimb. What will happen if a nerve impulse stimulates X? Now, as you can see, this is now uh, very easy. This is the humerus. Uh, this is the ulna makes a U-shaped here. Uh, the U-shaped ulna is here. And then we have the radius, which has got this little cap on top of it. And it says, what will happen if a nerve is stimulated? So this X is the biceps muscle. So when the biceps muscle contracts, what we have got to understand, biceps arm straightens. That's wrong. Biceps will contract and the arm bends. So the arm will bend at the elbow. So the biceps will contract because X is the biceps muscle. So biceps, what will happen if a nerve is stimulated? So when a muscle is stimulated, it's going to contract. So the biceps will contract and arm, you bend your arm at the elbow. Question 25, the bar chart shows the percentage of women who had babies of low weight among smokers and non-smokers. So we have percentage of women having babies with low birth weight. Smokers had something here, you can see it's nearly 15% and non-smokers had less than that, say about 10%. So we have 30 here and then so this would be 15 and then we would have something like 10 here or 5 here. So always put some figures on the graph. What is shown by the bar chart? More women smoke during pregnancy. Now whenever there's such a question, you read to yourself, does the bar chart tell me this? So does the bar chart tell me more women smoke during pregnancy than do not? No, it doesn't tell you anything. It's just telling you smokers, non-smoking and percentage of women having babies with low birth weight. Does it tell you smoking is bad for health of a pregnant woman? No, it doesn't tell you anything about that. Then it says women whose babies have low birth weights are smokers. No, we don't have a figure for uh, all the women who are smokers and non-smokers and we can't do a big comparison. We've just said percentage of women of having babies with low birth weight. So we maybe did a survey on uh, 10,000 women who are smokers and 10,000 women who are non-smokers, but we didn't do. And where did we do it? Which country? Which city? So it will vary from that. Then how many cigarettes were she smoking? We have no clue about that, but we just have some figures. So the answer to that was B, smoking in pregnancy increases the risk of low birth weight. That's all what you can figure out. The bar chart, does it tell you that? What is shown by the bar chart that women who smoke have larger percentage of women. 15% of women 
who smoked had not all women, only 15%, had low birth weight. And amongst the non-smokers, there were 10% of women who had low birth weight. So why? Why? They didn't smoke. So please look at the question and then understand it. What are they asking you? Then coming into question number 26, yeast is used in alcohol production. Under which conditions will yeast produce mo most alcohol? So whenever there is glucose and there is no oxygen because it will be anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration does not produce alcohol. So no oxygen should be there. And of course, glucose should be present. Then using the key, which organism is a virus? Has a cell wall? No, it doesn't have a cell wall. Go to two. Cell wall is made of chitin. Organism A, no, that would be a fungus. Cell wall is made of cellulose, plant. Then does not have a cell wall. So you go to three. Now three was has a cell membrane. No, it doesn't have a cell membrane. Has a protein coat. So the answer was D. So you must know how to read these keys and how you go on to. Has a cell wall, go to two. Does not have a cell wall, go to three. You know virus does not have a cell wall. So you go to three. In three has a cell membrane. No, it doesn't have a cell membrane. So then has a protein coat. So that's organism D, which is a virus. Question 28 is mentioned in the exam report. A common misconception was that decomposers are able to pass carbohydrates on to producers. Well, carbohydrates are made either by photosynthesis or by you eating and you, carbohydrates are then passed on to one. So remember the carbon cycle. So which statement correctly describes the relationships in ecosystems? So many students wrote A. Now that was wrong. Carbohydrates aren't passed from decomposers to producers. Energy is passed from carnivore to herbivore. That's the other way around. Producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer and then tertiary consumer. Then proteins are passed from primary to producer. Again, that's the reverse of it. Food chains, you have to know the normal food chain. Then water is passed from respiring decomposers to producers. Well, yes, because if uh, the decomposers like bacteria and fungi are respiring, they're producing carbon dioxide and water. Those water can be used by the plants. Producers are basically what? Plants. Then coming on to question number 29. The diagram shows a pyramid of biomass. What do levels 1, 2, and 3 represent? 1 is a biomass. So this is the producer. So which could be the plants and those are producers. Then 2 has to be a herbivore. And 3rd has to be a carnivore. So herbivore was 2 and carnivore was 3. So pyramid of biomass. Then question number 30 is on the carbon cycle. The diagram shows some of the stages in the carbon cycle, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, then plants, so process F, so plants are respiring, carbon dioxide is going back to the atmosphere, animals are respiring, carbon dioxide goes back to the atmosphere, microorganisms, now here process H, microorganisms are also respiring, so this is all respiration. So the three processes are respiration. So this is why this was the correct answer. You see, photosynthesis uses up. So if we had to draw an arrow for photosynthesis, then it would be like this. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is used by plants. There was no such arrow. It says diagram shows some of the stages in the carbon cycle. In question 31, again is mentioned in the exam report, confusion between the vector, the mosquito, and the malarial pathogen itself has led to incorrect answers being given. So which words can be applied to the organism that causes malaria? It's a microscopic, it's a parasite, it's a pathogen. It's not a vector, it's not sexually transmitted. So all the others were wrong because sexually transmitted here was wrong and vector here was wrong. Female Anopheles mosquito is the vector. Organism that causes malaria is plasmodium. Plasmodium is a protozoa. It's not a bacteria, it's not a virus, it's not a fungus. Then question 32, which activities can lead to soil instability? Deforestation or use of insecticides? 
so deforestation will lead to uh, soil instability but insecticides why would they lead to soil instability so this is what we have to understand soil instability because then soil erosion will start to occur when there is deforestation but insecticide is just going to kill the insects on the crops that's why we spray the crops with insecticides then coming on to question number 33 what is the function of sepals of most flowers to protect the flower in the bud stage and there's something that we all know that sepals protect the flower so this is the stem and then these are the sepals and the sepals protect the flower in the bud stage you must have seen these rose buds and they are beautiful and they you know the sepals protect them in that early stage then coming on to question number 34 Cell X contains 24 chromosomes. It divides by mitosis to produce cells Y and Z. So both of them will have 24. How many chromosomes does cell Z contain? This is the the normal definition of mitosis is that you know results in two genetically identical cells. So cell Z had to have 24. Yes. What has happened is that they have missed out one thing. First, the 24 chromosomes have to become 48. and then two cells are formed with 24 in each so the chromosome number this called dna replication so first the chromosome number doubles and then two cells are formed so this original cell is gone this is gone all these original cells are gone now just two daughter cells are formed which are genetically identical from that original cell Then question thirty-five is mentioned again in the exam report. What are the symptoms in the different stages of syphilis? The symptoms of syphilis were not well known, but understanding of this area of the syllabus could be improved. So symptoms of syphilis are a single uh, first stage, second stage, and third stage: a single sore on the skin, uh, second stage fever and widespread rash, and third stage is of course heart disease and dementia. Dementia, dementia is of course brain. You know when. when you don't recognize people and when you don't rem- remember things dementia is a loss of these these cerebral uh, powers which we have memory intelligence and uh, reasoning abilities and all that so that is lost in the third stage this is just a diagram to show you some of these uh, stages 1 stage 2 and stage 3 and i hope you can go through this and you can see how in the third stage we have uh, dementia and psychotic distorters internal bleeding damage to internal organs and respiratory failure but in the second stage there's just rash there's mucosal damage there's weight loss and there is uh, you know sort of slightly person feel feverish in stage 1 there's headache skin ulcer muscle pain and weakness and fatigue so i i'm sure this can help you a little bit in remembering these for the different stages of uh, syphilis coming on to question number 36 which substances are present in breast milk but not in bottled milk made from milk powder antibodies which the mother has the diseases which she had uh, will be passed on to the fetus uh, either through the placenta or in breast milk so this is the antibodies will be present in uh, breast milk but they won't be present in bottled milk we've not been able to figure out the antibodies and give them in the milk powder Then coming on to question number thirty-seven, what is the effect of environment on discontinuous variation? Discontinuous variation means uh, like uh, blood groups. What is the effect of environment on discontinuous variation, and what is an example of this type of variation in humans? So environmental effect, small ABO blood group system. so this is what they had to understand environmental effect is not much in this situation but they said small so i guess that's the only possible answer that we could think of then coming on to question number 38 in the inheritance of blood groups in humans the mn system is controlled by a single gene the gene has two alleles m and n that are codominant now the offspring of two now why are they saying m and n actually it is blood group ab which they are sort of just giving you other two names the offspring of two parents were two boys of blood group mn 
and M and a girl of blood group N. So they had one child M N, one child M and one child N. What are the possible genotypes of the parents? Now the fact that they had M and N. So we have to understand is that the parents, one of the parents must have had M and the other must have had N because you see two parents were two boys of blood group M. So M M and N N. So the parents could only be this. Because one M had to come from one parent and the other M had to come from the other parent. And N and N also. So the parents had to be M N into M N. Because these were the children. One was M and this one. One was M. So this was both M's in this. And one was N. So both N's in this. So this was the answer to it was B. The other could not have been possible. All of the others were incorrect. Question 39, which statement about chromosomes is correct? Chromosomes include a long molecule of DNA divided into sections called genes. Now why are the others wrong? Chromosomes are long DNA molecules called genes. Well, that's rubbish. Chromosomes are made up of DNA and sections of it are called genes. And chromosomes include genes which are divided into sections called DNA. No, I'm sorry, DNA sections are called genes. Genes include long DNA molecules called chromosomes. All rubbish. Question 40, the last one. Which statement is always true of dominant alleles? Now again, this is mentioned in the exam report. And the commonest error was the belief that dominant alleles are always more frequent than receptors. We've never studied that, so why would you do that? So more frequently, so most of the students did D, which was wrong. The D is wrong. More frequently, nobody said dominant alleles are more frequent. Now, what is true about dominant alleles? They, they give the same phenotype in heterozygous and homozygous states. Like, for instance, if there is big A, small a, then only the dominant trait will show its effect and even in this situation it would show its effect so they give the same phenotype so if we say this is a black furred rabbit big a small a then the big a big a is also a black furred rabbit so it will give the same phenotype phenotype means the physical features the appearance just like you have in another example let's look at this one i a i o this is also a group and this is also a group now this is homozygous and this is heterozygous. So they will have the same. They will both have blood group A. The person will be blood group A whether he is IAIA which is homozygous and IAIO is heterozygous. So this is always true of the dominant allele. So a little tough question but if you understand inheritance well then you actually know this answer. Okay that finishes this uh, paper and thank you very much and all the best.